Yeah. So there's a line gives in his teachings that says, um, when you want anything from a brother, you will see him as a brother no longer. And this is the human condition. It's, it's a state of desire. And you could say that nirvana or heaven or the present moment, the presence, is just a state of desireless contentment. Uh, it, the truth doesn't want for anything. It's not like the truth is looking for something, you know, to fill its cup. Or it's not like the truth is hoping something will be different, or hoping something will be a little bit better. It's not looking for an answer to a question. It's not looking for a yes. Uh, it, it just is a state which, which simply is. And so you might say that, that relationships in this world, as perceived through A Course in Miracles, offer a mirroring that goes on that really helps you get in touch with what's going on in your consciousness. It's like a mirror in your face, really, is what relationships are. And that's why they're so intense. And also, it sounds like from your question, you're just really tuned in. It just started with this little, little thing, just a little nudge of something in there. Maybe a reaction or a response to the no. And then, kind of spun off a little bit later into something bigger, into guilt. And this is the, the problem of expectations. There was a teacher one time that, that said, uh, the wise man expects things to be exactly as they are. <laughs> Which is kind of a cute way of saying no expectations, when you expect things to be exactly as they are. And it takes a lot of clearing the filter of consciousness to come down to that state of mind. Because the relationships of the world, like for example with your husband, were set up and they're, they're like based on expectations. Uh, and the, the more you go into the mind, the more you find subtle, very subtle realms of expectations. Uh, certainly even uh, when we talk about marriage, just marriage vows, if they're, if they're future based, uh, they're based on some expectations. We did have a, a wedding here at, down by the ocean uh, with Joe and, and Alisa, and I do remember uh, one of Joe's vows was, I love you now, <laughs> which I think is a pretty safe, <laughs> a safe vow, and then Alisa came with her vows, with no words. And so, they kind of avoided getting off into the future expectations and, and allowing the relationship to be used by the Spirit for forgiveness, to clear the mind of, of all these subtle expectations that are, that are in there. So, you might say that that that's really what the journey is. It's a journey into consciousness and into layers of beliefs that have to be uncovered and exposed in order for the peace to be a constant state. Otherwise, you tend to, with practice, you do have more and more peaceful moments and peaceful times, but then it just seems to get interrupted uh, by something. Um, one time the mystic uh, peace pilgrim, she said that, uh, oh yeah, I just sail along in life and then a problem comes along and knocks me back on the truth. Uh, she saw it as just kind of as a way to get knocked back <laughs> into center whenever a problem came in. So we could say in the more subtle realms, it's, it involves the expectations. And it could be as simple as, um, like the example you gave of um, make a dinner reservation at a restaurant, you know, there could be an expectation of just enjoyment of uh, companionship, of dining together with a loved one. Uh, Jesus talks about that in the Course in Miracles. Um, 
He says, you really believe you would be alone if, unless you were with another body. He talks about companionship as, as a concept. And uh, it seems to be an accepted concept for many. And when there, there's a subtle, um, you might say, uh, blip in that companionship, like a husband saying no to <laughs> make a dinner reservation, then that's where things can start to stir a little bit there. So, I know in my life, you know, it's been, that's been part of the emptying of my mind of all the concepts that's been going in and, and really facing the emotions whenever I felt uncomfortable when I wasn't with somebody, or the uncomfortableness sometimes of aloneness. Uh, and most of us have had those experiences where you can you know, you can feel lonely in a crowd, and you can feel connected and filled up when you're walking by yourself, maybe along the beach or whatever. So we, we have a hint that it's a psycho psychological state of mind, but it just takes a lot of practice and emptying and clearing to get down to what's under that little nudge that you felt. There's a root that runs much deeper, and it's like the root took you down into the guilt experience. It's really a very ontological guilt. It's a, it's a guilt based on the belief in separation from source, but, but that's so buried down in the unconscious that those little, the little stems that come up, uh, that have the little, little niggle of feeling that, that you experience on the surface, is just like an inroads into that which is much deeper. So, for me, in my life, where I've looked for completion in partnership, I've looked for completion in work, in family relationships, in environmental situations, in different locations and countries and so on and so forth, I have come to a, a clear awareness that there is a, a purpose, a calling that's in me that is identical with this presence. And so, you might say that, that the journey in life is really to find your inner calling and then follow it. Because when you do find your inner calling and you follow it, uh, it takes you, you know, into an extraordinary state of mind, which actually is very ordinary. It's, it's very natural, this peace. And so, you know, in my life it's, it's taken me over years and years into places, meeting people, and situations that I would have never imagined, including lately, uh, basically over the last couple years, I've been, I've been setting up a monastery. And if anybody asked me years ago uh, if they thought I would ever be setting up a monastery, I would have said, a monastery? You gotta be joking. But that's actually what seems to have unfolded in my life. So, um, thank you for starting the ball rolling with that. It's very subtle, those expectations. <laughs>